RAM, or reliability, availability, maintainability, is a way to optimize equipment to maximize return on investment. You can make something more reliable, it, you, add an, you add something in parallel, that's easy. Or, or you, you buy a more expensive piece of equipment, but you only want to do that if it's going to make the client make more money, that's going to improve their return on investment by doing so. So reliability is uh, whether things are operational or not from a uh, unplanned perspective, availability takes that number and also adds in scheduled maintenance activities and other, other things that would prevent it from being operational. And maintainability is can you, can you get in there and perform your maintenance activities, your turnaround in a particular given, in a particular allotted time. Sometimes an S is added onto this, makes it RAMs, S is for safety. You see RAMs, it's still RAM, but they, they want to include safety as an aspect in it too. Almost all RAM solvers use what's called Monte Carlo simulation, uses random numbers instead of just a plug and, plug and answer, numeric random numbers to come up with a, a series of trials or missions where it runs through time, if it's a 30 year life cycle, uh, or 20 year life cycle, it runs through 20 years, comes up with a predicted output, and then does it again. And then does it again, and then does it again, and then does it again, so that you have a good sample size, so that you can say, my mean production level is this, that, or the other. Uh, again, the mission length is often the life cycle, or the life of the facility. It calculates production, moves forward in time, based on, and sets, sets failures, it has things fail, ran, or not randomly, but based on random numbers, that it fits to a particular failure distribution. It fails, what's the effect on the system, calculates production level, moves forward in time until that thing is either restored or something else fails. It's the same kind of iterative process. And again, you need many, many missions or trials to get a significant sample size so that you can say with some sort of certainty, this is the mean on-stream factor. On-stream factor is the, is the result you're trying to get at here. A reliability study is not meant to improve reliability. The reliability is making sure things keep running. If the objective of this is not to make sure things keep running, at least not usually. Usually it's to see what is the value of increased reliability? What is the value of increased capacity? How much production do we lose if we decrease capacity? Sometimes that's a better answer. These studies, as with everything we try to do, comes back to what is the value of what we're trying to provide? Where are our opportunities for um, Adding equipment, where are, where are our bottlenecks? This, is, this type of study can tell you, because of the way this is configured, there is a reliability bottleneck here, a production bottleneck here. This thing fails more often than others. This is where you want to add, these are the most critical items where you can add more capacity or improve reliability if you can. Another reason is a bank will come in and say, or whoever's financing the project will come in and say, you need to do a RAM study. And often that is the reason RAM studies get done. The bank comes in and says, oh, you're gonna produce at 95%? Prove it. And so we come up with some number. I hate doing it this way though because we say you're gonna produce at 95%, 95.2365432%. It's never that number. It is never that number. That is hocus pocus, but it's based, on, it's based on a million different assumptions that go into this one number. The value is in saying, okay, we have this, these million assumptions, we change one, we change the capacity of that one thing, and we go from 95.23 to 95.33. We have that, that change, we can be relatively certain that change is based on that one, the, the change in the production is based on that one change that we made, that we now know the value of that change. We now know the value with relatively high confidence of improving the capacity, or raising the capacity of that, uh, that train or whatever else you're trying to do. Again, we start with a study basis. We then define the failure logic in a reliability block diagram, also called an availability block diagram. And that shows what is the effect if that piece of equipment goes offline. We then put that into, the, into a stochastic model. There's several softwares out there to do it. Uh, you, you can do this in Excel, and we actually will go through this quickly in how to do some of these calculations in Excel using the binomial theorem. But usually you end up with a software uh, that has Monte Carlo capabilities. You can actually do some Monte Carlo stuff in Excel also, we won't get into that today. And again, you run the model and say, probably something needs to change here. It's a refinement iterative process to get where you're going. And when you're done, again, you have a final report. One of the easiest tools to use out there is BlockSum from Reliasoft. 
it's a good tool. It allows you to put together reliability block diagrams, understand the failure logic of a system, but what it doesn't allow you to do is put in tanks and buffers and the ability to store product when something is down and another thing is operational really affects the overall production level of a facility and BlockSim doesn't do that. For that reason, we use a tool called Ramp. It is this ar archaic, you can't even use it on a modern computer, you have to go into XP mode to use this tool, but it's very, uh, very effective and it does what it needs to do and it gives you an answer in a pretty quick time. DNV has a couple of tools, Maros and Taro. If you're looking to spend $100,000 or $200,000 on a piece of software, those are the guys to go with. They do a great job. It's very expensive software, but it's used across industry uh, because it provides valuable information. Because we wanted to get this kind of information better than that information and not have to use RAMP, which has a lot of limitations, we developed our own tools. And it basically is, we have what we call our reliable process manager. It allows us to quickly build a block diagram and have tanks and have all sorts of split flows. Um, and sometimes we actually, we, all we need is a Microsoft function. Uh, you can build your own functions in Excel to give you the calculations you're looking for. The two of those combined can give you a pretty quick answer to some very difficult problems. So for example, if we had a tank and we had a pump that were pumping out of the tank and that, that had to go through a cooler as it's coming out or heater or whatever it happens to be there, Failure logic is, we call it our rule of thumb, if you were to take your thumb and put it over this pump, what would happen to the system? When nothing could get out of that tank and couldn't go through that cooler, your whole system is down because that is out. Well, so how do you fix that? Well, you can put two 50% pumps, but the overall availability of this system actually isn't any better because if, if you lose half now and half later, you've still lost 100% for the same amount of time you, you haven't gained anything. Okay, well, I put in 200% pumps. And yeah, that's, that's a very common. You have a spare pump. Just about every facility that gets built has a spare pump for this very reason. Pumps and rotating equipment fail the most. But there's another solution that says, what if you had three 50% pumps? You have some high pressure charge pumps? This turns out to be just as effective, just as reliable as 200% pumps. Except instead of a total of 200% capacity here, 100 plus 100, I have 150. This may be a lower cost solution than building, putting in a full spare. This is the uh, generalized binomial theorem, uh, binomial function. This equation is what goes on behind the scenes when you have, when you're comparing whether you have 200% or 350% uh, pumps, each with the same failure rate, let's say, or even different failure rates. It, go, it goes in this, into this kind of equation. Um, if you have, those are for things in parallel. Once you have a on-stream factor for something in parallel and you have something downstream of it, it's just simply the product of the two on-stream factors. It's like flipping a coin. They're independent of each other. Uh, if, you, if you want to flip two coins and you want to know the probability that both show up heads, well, there's 50% chance of the first one and 50% chance of the second one. You multiply them together, there's a 25% chance that when you flip both coins, they're both heads. It's the same principle going on here. So you can, in Excel, do all of this uh, just with spreadsheet functions. This shows the, the, this, this equation spread out. This is the uh, combination. It's, it means if you have three of them, three choose zero, three choose one, three choose two. If, if none of them are offline, the production is 100%. If one of the 50% pumps is offline, you're still at 100%. If two are offline, you're at 50%, and if three are offline, you're at 0%, you, you add all that up, and you get for two pumps at 100%, 99.99992, and for three pumps, 99.99988. For, for context, that difference is 22 minutes of production over 100 years. They're, they're effectively the same reliability, right? This kind of analysis can help you make a better decision, okay, what capacity do we really need there? Unless there is a significant difference in reliability between the pumps themselves, 200% versus 350% is slam dunk, move forward. And there's no real reason to expect there to be a significant difference in reliability unless they're very different services, but you know, that's not what we're doing. We're always comparing the same service to same service. So where are we? We've gone through all four of these, and we linear programming has a broader scope 
but not nearly as much resolution as we come all the way down here to computational fluid dynamics. It's got great resolution, but it's a very limited scope. This, this kind of order can give you, okay, what are we trying to solve? What is the scope of the problem we're trying to solve? It can point to which kind of study should you be using.